Hello reformers and welcome back to Mountain Blade Warband. Now when we left off we were at Dirtios Castle and we have one specific task to complete here. I've done a little bit of arduousness in the off-screen time and I gotta say that I was just absolutely livid halfway through it because I was just like, oh, these units, oh, just who could not handle it really, just could not handle it because they are being very annoying. And by annoying, I mean, they're literally defending with about 30 of them. They have about 26 remaining. And well, basically it was just an utter insane task for us to get up there because Every single time we try, all my infantry, all my cavalry would get eliminated, and then my crossbowmen, they, for some reason, wouldn't find anyone to shoot at. And if they did find someone to shoot at, they'd take so long to kill him that it would just be a waste of time. So, <laughs> yes, it's been a rather, yeah, rather awful time of things, but, uh, well, at least now, maybe, I'll be able to... They're shooting me through the wall. Do you see that? That's also a thing that's kind of annoying about this layout, and that's exactly the reason why in the last episode I was complaining about this particular layout as well, because if you can see there, you see that guy to the right of that one that's currently fully exposed? See that one? He's shooting through the environment. Well, he was shooting at the environment when, you know, he was shooting at me, but the point is, there are some units here that can shoot through the wall, or at the very least, shoot through the small lip of the battlements. And that is obviously going to make any player get a little bit irritated, because when you get hit for a large amount of damage, like I ju you know, just did, then, you know, you want to have a sort of reasonable explanation for it. You know, not the AI abusing a particular, you know, see-through wall or whatever the case may be. And, yeah, that's, that's exactly the reason why I was just like, Ah, oh dear, you know, just, just really not having a good time of things. Like this guy, for example, right there, yeah, I can see his head, but he can probably shoot through this, this little wall here, at least a little bit. And that's going to cause us to take unnecessary damage. Now, hopefully I'm not going to fall over here. If I fall over, then that's going to be me dead. Now, let's see if I can... Gonna tell my archers to charge in here. I wish I had battle continuation to be honest. Okay, let's see. Oh no! Oh no! No, no. Okay. Yeah, there you go. That's what you get. Alright, so kill that guy, and then I'm just gonna try shooting this one a little bit. Can I? Can I shoot him? No! Look at this! Can, can you just, can you just, uh, you know, take a look at this for, for a real quick second? This castle layout is awful. You see that? These bolts and arrows and things like that have hit an invisible wall. And that's exactly the reason why I hate this castle layout. Because every single place that you look, there's always something that can give the defenders an advantage. Thankfully, however, this is now over and we can move on. Hooray! You know, we don't have to worry about this anymore. Because, quite frankly, I've had enough of it. I've had enough of this. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're now going to be able to move on and go to a different castle or whatever the case may be. And yeah, we're going to have a good old fun time wherever that leads us. So I'm going to take some man at arms here. Do they have anything else that I really want? Well, they do have a, sh a sharpshooter, I suppose. So I guess I'm probably going to be taking one of those. Going to leave this footman behind. Sorry about that footman. You can go and have a nice old fun time in the nearby tavern, I suppose. And there you go. Nice. All right. So that's that's good. Now I can finally give this... I, I don't know. I guess I could give this to... Oh, yeah. Tartius is the annoying one, isn't he? Yes, he's the annoying one. Okay, yeah. Also, by the way, in my off-screen time, I went to Nara, and along the way, I saw Lord Beheshtur. And he told me that, L uh, that Lord Tartius, because I was trying to find where he was, uh, Lord Tartius is currently imprisoned in Yelbegi Castle. And I think it's probably about time that we go and rescue him, because I have no idea how long he's even been there. So this is going to be rather amusing. Anyway, let's have a look here. Okay, so Lord Play is not liking us, and Tartius is not liking us, and Akadan is now liking us, because I managed to give him some things. Now... What we need to do is we need to go to Yelbegi Castle, and hopefully this is going to appease 
Uh, appease the Nords that are attempting to take Oxcal from us. No, but yes, appe appease, what, what is his name again? Appease person A that got himself taken prisoner? Yeah, that person. Uh, yes, Dirtius Castle as well. Oh my, the Nords are now going to be one of those... Uh, one of those proverbial thorns in the side, I guess. Anyway, we're going to try and get to Uxcarl, see what's going on here. Hello. Oh. Lord Talbar is waging one-handed war against a bunch of Nord vassals. I guess I'm going to go and help him, I suppose. Let's do it. 195 versus 280. I'm a bit worried about this, suffice it to say, because I don't have a primary, ar well, primary cavalry army. So obviously that is going to be a bit meh. I mean, it's going to be fine. I don't think we're going to have too many problems with it. But obviously if we had a lot more cavalry, then this would be much, much simpler. But yeah, I think it should be fine. I mean, what are, what are they again? They're Nords, right? Yeah, so they, they should have no cavalry what, whatsoever to speak of. So that should mean that our archers have a much easier time of things. And yeah, we, we might have... We might be okay. We might be okay. So let's just put our infantry in the front there, and I'm gonna try and put my crossbowmen around here. And do I have any cavalry? I've got. Yeah, I've got a couple of cavalry. Why not? Let's let's use a couple of those guys. I'm gonna tell my infantry to charge in here because I don't want the few cavalry that the enemy has. They actually have quite a few cavalry. Does that mean that they have a defector on their side? It seems like they might have a defector on their side. Well, whatever the case may be, I'm gonna tell my Cavalry to charge in, anyway. Yes, it does! Okay, so they... Oh, wow, this is actually a Kurgit and a Saranid, and as, as well as a... What? What else? What else do we have here? I think just a Kurgit and a Saranid. A couple of defectors from those factions, by the looks of things, because I don't see anyone else dying here. I don't see any Nords, hilariously enough. Oh, yeah, isn't it amazing? Now that... We are really, really in the late game. I mean, I am on day... I think I'm almost on day 700 at the moment. So, yeah. We're in the extreme late game at the moment. And it is just crazy to see how many lords have been shuffled, basically. So, you know, if the, the Saranids are just like, Yeah, I'm going to defect to the Nords. And the Kurgits are like, Yeah, I'm going to defect to the Saranids. And... You know, it's just like, <laughs> you're just having to fight all kinds of random, random, you know, troops and, and vassals and things like that because everyone has just been indicted multiple times and I've even started seeing a couple of lords be exiled from Calradia in general because I, I believe, doesn't that happen when a particular lord has attempted to join or has joined a number of factions? Or maybe all of the factions at once, and then, uh, you know, in the final indictment, whenever that particular lord would get indicted at the very end of his so-called life cycle, then he would go into exile. Isn't that the way things go? I think that's the way things go, but I could be, you know, I could be wrong about that. I, I don't know the specifics surrounding the exile mechanic, but as far as I'm aware, it's something along those lines. Okay, I'm going to tell my archers to charge in now, just so that we can get a little bit more presence on the battlefield. Because as it stands, it seems like the very few infantry that we had are no longer being very effective. Because these archers, and indeed horse archers, are just running around and doing whatever it is they want to do. And we're not able to stop them at all, which is extremely annoying. Extremely annoying. So let's have a look. Oh, yeah, yeah. As you can see, they're just absolutely spreading themselves out as much as they possibly can. And let me tell you, it seems like whenever I play native and I've just had one of those really, really irritating sieges, everything else always seems to sort of collapse and be the same exact kind of annoyance. So, you know, you, you get that kind of, you get that kind of sort of feeling where you're just a bit frustrated by the siege. And then it seems like that feeling gets sort of carried over into every single fight that you have that day. And I, I don't know whether you get that as well, just playing in your free time. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. 
But if you're like me and, you know, you find a couple of siege layouts a bit annoying or you find fighting, I don't know, just random random example, if you, if you find fighting the Vagias annoying, and then you go and fight a different faction completely, like let's say the Vagias and the, the Kurgits, you know, are at war against you, and then you, you, you know, you get defeated by a Vagia vassal or something along those lines, when you've just started out and you've got about 50 units or whatever, and you get pounced on by a Vagia vassal with 120. And then, then you, you know, build up your army and you're, you know, back to almost full strength, and then out of nowhere some Kurgits attack you. And, and in that case, maybe, you know, maybe you're still going to be able, you know, with your new units to, to deal with that Kurgit vassal. Let's say, you know, that Kurgit vassal has about 70 and you've got about 50 yet again. And then you think to yourself, okay, well, I think we're going to be fine. And then throughout the course of the battle, because of the, the previous annoyance, maybe that carries forward. Maybe, you know, maybe you're starting to get irritated by the Kurgit horse archers that are just littering themselves all over the battlefield. They're just spreading themselves out on purpose so that it takes even longer to win this battle that you would have otherwise won against any, any other faction long ago. And that's exactly the kind of feeling that I'm talking about here. And that's, the, that's not to say that Warband in general is shall we say, annoying, but it does get a little bit frustrating at times, especially when you have those kinds of situations. I mean, you you know, you know, if, if you've played Warband for, you know, a campaign or two, or if you've played a couple of mods, or, you know, even if you have just watched Warband on YouTube or wherever, Twitch or something like that, even if you've just watched it, then you know that, you know, some aspects of the game can get a little bit irritating, but... That's just, that, that's the, isn't that the case with every game? I think that's basically the case with every game. Maybe with the exception of, hmm, maybe, yeah, maybe even walking simulators. Yeah, maybe even walking simulators would have the same kind of effect because maybe at that point you're just like, why aren't you walking faster? You know, <laughs> that sort of thing. Like Dear Esther, for example, that's a, that's a prime example of a walking simulator right there. So yeah, anyway, we got off an, an, on an amazing sort of off the beaten track you know, discussion there, so yeah, by all means, if you want to, then, you know, vent a little bit in the comments and just kind of say, hey, I, you know, I had a bit of an annoying time playing this game or that game or wh whichever game you'd like, and maybe you can you know, get a bit of a discussion going over there. That would be pretty cool, but anyway, yeah, if you don't want to do that, then that's absolutely fine as well. Just enjoy the episode as much as, you know, as much as, as little as you like. Anyway, we're going to try and kill these Kurgits because goodness knows they're annoying. Aren't they? I mean, just just look at these. Look at them right now. Look at what they are attempting to do. Look, they're just running around like absolute scoundrels. They're just like, yes, you can't catch me. You can't catch me. I'm not made of gingerbread, but you can't catch me. I'm the Kurgit man. Yes, that's what's going on here. That is seriously what's going on here. And I gotta say that that really that really grinds my gears. It really does. Well, I think this might be one of the last. Uh, Apparently he ran into a tree, but yes, I think this might be one of the last cavalry units that we have to deal with from the Kurgits. I gotta tell you that it's been about, I don't even know, five to ten minutes since he saw me last, and literally it's, it's literally this. It's literally just been this. They run off to the farthest corners of the battlefield, and they're just like, yes, that's exactly what we're programmed to do. We're, we're programmed to elongate the game experience artificially so that you feel like you're spending more and more time in this game. Yeah, no, I'm, I, that's my skeptical hat on. Yes, that's my skeptical hat on. But anyway, that guy managed to escape. Good on him. Good on him. But yes, we have finally prevailed, I was going to say. But I'm just going to send my units in. I do not care if I lose anyone. There we go. All right, so Lord Talbar is, I think, is is he fine? Yeah, it seems like he's fine. All right. Yeah, I'm not going to be taking those forest bandits. Thank you very much. There's a tempered saber. That actually looks pretty decent. Maybe I should take that. No, I still want to find the military cleaver, to be honest. I still want to find that. So hopefully we'll be able to pretty soon. Now, what I'd like to do is go to Yelbeggy Castle and see if we can rescue the person. Yes, what's his name? <laughs> uh, can you believe that I still can't remember his name? I actually remembered Tarchius. There we go. I actually remembered before we fought the Nords, but now, yes, Tarchius is his name. 
and getting captured is his game by the looks of things. So let's go over there and see what's going on. Wow, the forest bandits actually have some pretty decently large parties at the moment. Well, thankfully we don't have to fight them any further. Alright, so, so really nice, some sharpshooters. We have 47 sharpshooters? Why are they being so bad? Why are they so bad? Why aren't they doing more to help me? <laughs> oh well, never mind. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just wait for about 12 hours, wait until the morning, and then we'll be building our whatever they may be. I actually don't know whether they're ladders or siege tower. Ah, okay, well that was a pleasant surprise. It was just a ladder castle and, oh, okay. Interesting. I, I'm not entirely sure about this, to be honest. I think we, we should do fine, but it really depends on how our crossbowmen do. And this is a very, very bad place for crossbowmen, isn't it? I mean, just, just look at it. They have an extremely bad angle for most of the enemies, and they're not going to be able to shoot very easily. But saying that, they're actually doing a pretty good job right now. They're actually doing a pretty good job. So I'm going to be quite surprised if we're able to win this through our sharpshooters alone. But who knows? Maybe we're going to pull something off. Maybe it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, I don't know though. I don't know. What is cool at the moment though is we're actually killing most of the archers that the enemy has fielded in one headshot. Isn't that amazing? I, I'm, I'm actually really surprised. I'm surprised about that because usually we have a pretty difficult time in eliminating anyone. But it seems because the Nords do not care to give their archers helms, by the looks of things, that it is causing a much easier time for us. Very nice, actually. Wow, we're even able to eliminate veteran archers with 45 damage headshots. That's nice. Right, so how is everyone doing? We've killed 32 so far. I don't even know. Uh, do they? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, they have about 182 here, don't they? Okay, so I'm going to tell my infantry and cavalry to charge in here. And I'm going to tell my crossbowmen to come a little bit closer. And then we're going to see what happens here. Now, of course, their archers are pretty decent in melee combat. So we do need to be a little bit careful of that. And we need to be very, very careful about their infantry. Because as we know, Nords are fantastic in infantry situations, and this is no different. So I'm very, very worried about taking fatal damage here. I'd like to at least get inside. Come on, yeah, yeah, there we go, there we go. Nice, nice. Okay, so hopefully I'll be able to just get past these guys and not take too much damage. Is there anyone up here? No, no one up here. Okay, fantastic. Now, I should, in theory, be able to eliminate these as well. If I have luck on my side, which I apparently do. Yes, a little bit. A little bit of luck. A little bit of luck. Oh, nice. We destroyed his shield. Very good. All right. Seems like a Saranid Axe is a little bit better than a Nord Axe because they're not able to really destroy my shield that easily. Well, obviously, it really depends on the amount of Power Strike you have as well, but still. It's kind of nice. It's kind of nice that we're actually able to go one-on-one -on -one with some of these guys. Obviously, I don't know whether they have any Huskals. It probably would have done a, a pretty good service to me to take a look and make sure that they didn't have any house cars before heading in here, but, ah, uh, well, you know me. I tend to rush in where basically angels fear to tread. Everyone fears to tread where Barney treads, of course, because usually it's the death zone, whatever the death zone may be in that situation. Oh, I'm being, I'm being stabbed, being stabbed from behind. I don't like, I don't appreciate that. Oh, wow. What did we get killed by there? Hmm. I don't even know. I, I didn't even see what I got killed by, but I apparently got killed by a Nord-trained footman. I thought I had covered all the angles, but apparently I didn't. Ah, well that's a shame, because as you can see, we were well on our way to achieving a victory. Oh, this is fantastic. I was actually just waiting here for some time at Yelbegi Castle, and I was just like, yeah, okay, I'm just gonna, you know, wait and get myself regenerated, and then we're gonna go back in and, uh, you know, try and take it. And obviously rescue Lord Tartius in the process. But the Rodox are actually offering us a peace agreement. I'm very, very surprised at this. They haven't taken anything from us as far as I'm aware, so I'm just going to be accepting it because right to rule is always important. I should also report, by the way, that Dirtios Castle was just taken by the Nords. So that is going to be a bit of a problem, but I think it's going to be also 
relatively easy. Oh, here we go. Dirtyos Castle has been besieged by Lord Uramuda. So, yes, apparently he's coming through for us once again. I think he was also one of the one of the vassals to go off by himself and actually do these things. So I'm very, very happy with him deciding to take that course of action because, you know, these vassals, sometimes they tend to just call feasts all the time and those feasts are just like, oh, yes, uh, so how was your weekend? How was the weather and all that sort of thing? And then you know, I'm just like, but uh, I need some, uh, I need some assistance here, guys. Uh, and then they're just like, no. <laughs> yeah, that's that's usually how it goes. So it's pretty nice that Lord Urumudo is actually doing something, you know, somewhat useful. So I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Okay, so let's just weaken as many of them as we can. I'm just going to send my cavalry and infantry in once again. They don't seem to have anyone that can really stop us heavily, like Nord Huskars, for example, so this should be a pretty easy thing to do, but I don't really want to count my chickens just yet, because you never know. You never know. I could get eliminated again, which is looking likely at the moment. Who am I being? Am I being shot? Am I being? Yes, I am. I'm being shot by, ah, those, those archers over here. Yes, they were shooting. I find that very strange. That's also another sort of quote-unquote gamey thing that I don't particularly appreciate about Warband. And that's that basically Warband is a game about being a soldier in an army. You're not, you know, a commander like in Total War or Starcraft or anything like that. You're not above the action. You are in the action. And I personally feel like you should be treated as such. You should be treated as a soldier by enemy soldiers. But the enemy AI, you know what it does? It targets the player character specifically. And that's, in my opinion, a little bit insidious, but it seems that way to me. After all my years playing this, that is, that is my analysis of that anyway. But yes, for now... I'm going to be ending this episode of here. What I'm going to do is I will resume recording next time around here, probably when we're just about to win in Yalbagi Castle because we need to penetrate the defenses once again. And then I'm probably going to be taking Duchios Castle off screen or something like that because it will probably just need a surrender or a very, very quick siege anyway. And then we can head on to Curin Castle and Tyr. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.